financial argument. Follow us on YouTube. Bo Pony on the other line. End of this telephone call from Gold 2020 forecast. <laughs> Bo, how the devil are you? I am well for giving me a call, and I look forward to speaking with you today, so thank you. Yeah, well, Bo, you are very well known on the internet and around some of the the left field speaking opportunities. I know you know Jeff Berwick, um, and you have made some pretty amazing um, predictions, especially especially around the gold area, um, you've absolutely nailed gold to 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 the day when the low was going to be happening. And since that point, gold has been going up. There's no two ways about it. That cannot be denied. But you've also made some other predictions about the world stock markets, and I've been focusing on the Dow, the DAX, the FTSE, and so on and so forth, and they have been going sideways. They've been dipping, they've been going up, they've been dipping, they've been going up, um, and I believe that's due to QE, otherwise known as quantitative easing, where the banks print money and they buy back their own shares. Anyway, Bo, Give us an overview. Tell us about gold. Well, with regards to gold, um, I would just say that, uh, you know, since our forecast, we scheduled an interview. We had an interview on December 3rd. On that day, we say today should be the low for gold. That low that the morning came in at $1,045. And from that day forward, gold turned into a bull and so it's basically the, the bull market resumed that started in the year 2000 when it began initially at $247. Like and so the bull market has now resumed. That was the final low uh, for gold. Um, and then from that time point, as we've all seen, you know, we've never since then seen $1,045 again. Um, you know, ev uh, no one actually even believed that was a low because every time the gold goes down, everybody keeps saying a thousand dollars, and there's other analysts calling for seven hundred dollar gold, and you know, and and the problem is, is that you know, it's number one, those numbers aren't going to happen because the bottom has already arrived. Um, but it is not until recently where everybody's starting to get on the bandwagon and, and you know starting to realize well maybe gold really is in a bull market. Uh, the mining shares are doing incredible. Uh, when we were in, uh, when I was in Van, uh, in, sorry, Vancouver, uh, I was speaking on stage um, the second week of January, and I especially did an interview there, and I basically said the mining stocks are bottoming today or within the past couple of days. They bottomed. And look at the mining shares. The mining shares from that point forward have moved up. Up and I think they've some have doubled, some have tripled, but they're uh, you know from the Huey being I think like at a hundred and now it's it's you know it's it's just over 200, uh, two hundred to two twenty or two thirty right now. So the Huey the mining index has doubled, so that's a hundred percent improvement just in only a few months. So um, everything looks incredible for the gold sector. Uh, we have a, you know incredible price movement still into the future. Uh, for gold and silver, why? Because you know these are still very low prices that we're we're uh, you know looking at today for gold. You know today uh, being the tenth of June, gold. You know last I checked was trading I think at uh, about twelve hundred and seventy one dollars, and silver is trading at seventeen and a quarter, basically seventeen point two five. Did an interview two weeks ago when you know again what happened two weeks ago? What happened in May? Gold was going down, right? And the whole everybody on all the bears came out. Oh, gold's going to a thousand dollars again. And then you had even the few of the guys saying it's going to go to seven hundred. And and we you know on our, on our turn on our turn work for gold, we had the end of May as a low. And that was in, so we were looking. So we all went. So there was a point to go long. We all got out in in early May, and we were and the and the was to go. We were supposed to go long again or go basically looking for a turn to the upside. In the very um, you know end of May, early June, and look what happened. You know, gold went down to a low of two uh, one hundred uh, twelve hundred and one dollars was the actual low, and today it trades at twelve seventy one. So again, perfect turn. 
So, you know, every time gold goes down, the bear cap comes out, the analysts, everybody starts screaming for thousand dollar gold and it's not happening. It's not going to happen. Uh, we are in a bull market for gold and we're just, just gold is just warming up for incredible price action still this year. You're not alone when you say that because, um, my brother is a hedge fund owner over in Australia and I was speaking to him about gold and he said, listen, um, Dave, they're not going to raise interest rates. And as we know, in December, Janet Yellen came out and she said, oh, we're going to raise uh, the base rate in the US by uh, 0.25%. Very questionable whether that actually took place or not. And then they've been threatening to get it up to 2%. Um, and of course, there is no reaction. Um, and every time they don't raise base in the base uh, interest rate, then people are looking at the bonds, they're looking at the returns, and they say there is no return, and they go to gold. Any truth in that, Bo? Absolutely. You know, that's, that's a beautiful description. Uh, you know, well done on that. Um, and what I would say is that it doesn't matter what the Fed says, gold's going up, okay? That's it. Um, and, and they're basically, you know, because if they do raise rates, well, that's inflationary. Well, that's great for gold. If they don't raise rates, they basically got called on a bluff and gold goes up anyways. So it's, it's a no win. Gold's going up. And, and, uh, in the markets, they're basically, all they got is just downwards price action. It's as soon as something major or dramatic happens. But the, but gold, gold's price action, um, is going to go up. And, um, you know, and these prices are very soon to be never, ever seen again. When gold moves, it's going to move hundreds of dollars. Okay. So the fact that, you know, a gold from the low of $1,045 to today is 271. So that's a $200 change. Okay. That has taken December, January, February, March, you know, both say five to six months. Okay. We're going to, that's a $200 move in about, you know, say between then and now, say 205 months. We're going to see $200 moves in one day. Okay. When gold goes, the, you know, the, these prices will be, you know, people will have wished that they bought these prices, but it'll be too, it'll be too late because gold will not move like it's done in the past five months. The next move on gold is going to be extraordinary. But here's the thing, you've got to own it. You can't own po paper gold or paper metal. You've got to own the physical. Now, I've got an asset. I've got a property in the heart of London. And I tell you, Bo, I'm selling. I'm selling because I think that market has hit its max. And people are saying to me, Dave Herschel, you're a nutcase selling in the heart of London. You'll never get back into that marketplace. And my plan is precious metals and diversification, but I'm getting out of the market. Now, what would you say to that? Now, I'm not asking you for your advice, clearly. Well, just looking at you know, what you're saying, but more so just looking at what my cycle, you know, what my cycles are looking at. I basically see several things happening. I see a mass, a, a very powerful move in gold. A very powerful move in gold would be in reaction to probably a very bad move downwards in the in the equity markets, the stock markets, because as one would explode, the other would collapse. And as that happens, um, what I believe, what you know, the real estate markets are the only reason real estate markets have value or are have high values. Better word, high values, is because the equity markets have high values. But the real estate market is directly correlated with with the stock markets. So if the stock markets take a fifty percent haircut, you know, and and uh, you know, if you look at the moving averages, you know, you you look at. Uh, you know, on, on a, on a weekly basis, you know, with the 200 day moving average on some of the, some of the markets, the equity markets, you know, they could class 50% and still be, you know, within reasonable, reasonable price valuations. So you know, where, where the markets are priced now, it's, it's insane. It's, 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 you know, this is where it was in the year 2007 when everybody's, Hey, everything's fine, you know, buy, buy real estate. And next thing you know, the real estate prices get cut in half. Um, problem with this collapse is it's, you know, from my look at it from, from a cycle perspective and from charting patterns, 
is you know this collapse, you know this or this crash that's going it's going to you know, occur um, ends up being something that will affect bonds. So I think you know there, there's an issue with bonds as well too. And bottom line is you know it's just with if the stock market drops substantially, which it will. Just to get back to even in normal, you know, price valuations, real estate will collapse with it, and so I think there'll be many, many buying opportunities for real estate in the future, um, especially if you own gold and silver, because you know, gold and silver, I believe, are going to go, you know, in, in numbers that people can't imagine, because I believe. Um, that uh, this price suppression, the manipulation or the suppression that we've seen for five years now, when it gets released, um, the numbers are going to be extraordinary for gold and silver. And so, people who own the, own the metals will be able to, you know, do some, you know, probably buy some nice property uh, in the in the future at very very reasonable prices if they if they are owning if they do hold precious metals. That's correct. People think that when the market is going up, it's always going to go up. And when it's going down, it's always going to go down. And it's you've got to judge it. It's very difficult to judge it. it almost impossible. But I'm sitting here and I'm thinking I've got to make a move. And a lot of people are in my in my shoes right now and I'm scared to make a move but I've got to make a commitment and you know what I've got to make a commitment to God's money and God's money is gold and silver and that's just where I'm at with it so I'm committed I'm getting rid of my assets that I and I think those assets are going to collapse I don't know that for sure but that's what my research is telling me and I'm going to reinvest that in that that capital fiat currency we all know that there's no inherent value in fiat currency if you don't know that look it look into it you've got to start your research somewhere but there's no inherent value in the pound or the dollar we came off the gold standard in 1973 and so on and so forth it goes on however Bo right when we last spoke we spoke about the indices the world stock markets now you brilliantly bold and you said these markets will come down at a certain point and I watched those markets and they went down. I was short on the DAX, the FTSE, the CAC, the Dow and the S&P 500. And they went down and then it stopped and I was, I thought, wow, Bo's got it, Bo's got it. And boom, they bounced straight back up. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And since that point, the markets have been going sideways around the world. And I'm still waiting for the collapse. Yeah, it, it, it all began with the Shemitah cycle, which from a biblical standpoint was the seventh year was last September. And last September was to be a crash month based on the seven year cycle and there was no crash and and we were looking at the chart patterns and we had an up cycle so we were pretty much the only I think I was pretty much one of the only people in the world saying that there will be will be no stock crash in September of 2015 drink Kangen Kangen because it tastes good Kangen is awesome we love Kangen because I love it the water's the way forward keeps us hydrated drink nothing but it yes we love it uh, and, and then we are correct on that. The markets um, from the August crash rallied back up into, um, I think it was late October, early November, and then crashed again in November, then into December, and then down into January, February. So that's what you were just speaking about as a second leg down. And so we've, so we've had a top come in on in 2015. A first leg down was the crash in August. Then when there was a secondary rally, which came into the end of the year early in the very, very end, let's say the third, end of December, and then you have the, the, the big crash starting January into February. So that was lake two. And from that point, that was to set the, the, the kind of the spiral for the market to start crashing with lower highs and lower highs and keep crashing down all the way into, the, you know, into say, December, into June, possibly early part of July. And instead, the markets have been, they just keep, they've been printing money, propping the market up. But all this, if you look at the chart, nothing's changed. The, the, the wedge pattern still broke in August. And we've had one leg down in August, 
another leg down in January, February, and now rally month back up into May, June. And so all that's missing, because this is a triple top formation, and all that's missing now is the collapse. And, uh, and so if you, interestingly enough, I think the DAX closed down last night over 250 points, and that would have been like, I think, the 9th or the 10th of June. Um, so from this point, I believe the markets are turning right here, right now. And so we'll need to see how ugly this crash gets. But I believe the third leg down is beginning right now. Well, that's very interesting because um, the DAX has lost over 2% today. There's no two ways about it. It's the, the, the numbers do not lie. Um, and we are heading into a period over a summer period, which generally speaking is quite quiet, is it not? And when I look back through the, the cycles of crashes, they are around a seven-year period, as you say. And in 1929, um, and I tell you why I bring that up, is because I'm reading a book called The Alcoholics Anonymous, because I'm, I'm, I'm a recovering alco uh, um, alky. And um, in 1929, there was a crash in October. Now, is there something about October that we need to be aware of, Bo? Well, yes and no. Now, in relation to a stock crash, we'll have to see. Um, what I'm more concerned about right now is um, the events that lead up to October. So between now and October, what I have from a cycle perspective, and, and probably the best, I, I would suggest your listeners go to um, YouTube, type in my name, or type in gold 2020 forecast on the YouTube channel, and the top video that was just um, that we just posted on our webpage um, was was titled June uh, 2016 Zero Hour. Now I, I would suggest listening to that. It's a, a 12 minute video. Um, but in there, in that video, I outline between the month of June, which is now, and October of this year, five events I expect are going to occur. Looking at our cycle work, and this is you know, we've had we've had these you know patterns out for you know for years now. But most importantly, is these five points are what I expect are going to happen. Number one is I expect gold fever to hit because of a price move in gold is going to be extremely powerful. So I believe gold and silver are going to have a very powerful move here shortly. Um, I believe as that's occurring or in reaction, the equity markets are going to crash sizably. So we should so that so basically from today, if today is a turning point as the Dow I'm sorry, as the um, um, DAX has already dropped over 2%, 250 points. I believe we should have a turn starting today. We'll see. Um, and then in reaction to the crash that occurs, I believe they will turn the printing presses on and we're going to really begin to experience hyperinflation in our world. So um, that will be the third point. And then again, in reaction to the crash, the real estate um, val valuations will uh, take a massive uh, drop in value. So I believe real estate will, will, will crash or take a very sizable price drop and then continue that for, for a long time. So this, this bounce on the real estate will not be quick. It's going to collapse and keep crashing into lower prices. Um, and that's probably relating, relation to some type of a bond issue because I think, um, the, the bonds become, um, you know, people just started running from the bonds. I, I think they're the, they're they're not going to be assets uh, that the world are going to want to hold because everybody's going to be fleeing to things that you can hold: gold, silver, you know, commodities. I believe that's where um, the money is going to go into 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 assets that can be held physically versus versus paper. So I believe um, you know the, the the concept of faith and confidence um, cracks or becomes um, very problematic between now, June, and October of this year. Herschel 36, I'm working on a brand new album. The best is yet to come is political electro punk. Click here, like, and share. Interesting. Okay, so I'm just looking at my screen at the moment. Uh, the US 30 is down 
around 0.5 percent the german dax is down 2.77 percent that's almost a three percent drop right um the uk FTSE is down um 2.16 percent which is amazing considering the, the the way the FTSE work uh the cac is very similar to the FTSE, and you and i in our previous interviews have already gone through your charts that clearly illustrate that when one market goes up so do the rest um, that's right so that they're, they're all interlinked sorry go for it bo no and one thing i wanted to add is for the past few weeks you wanted to do an interview and what day do we schedule today right why why because my war cycle counts potentially we're looking for this to occur today and there you go all the markets turned so we'll see but today is supposed to be just like when gold made a bottom on december 3rd today is supposed to be the turn to the downside for the equity markets interesting so the other point that i brought up was october bow because I know in your interviews you had said in March that th that this this crash will happen between the end of February, beginning of March, through to October. Now we had the panic of 1907. Um, that was October. We had Black Tuesday, Thursday, and Monday, October 29, and we had Black Monday, October. 1987 as an example i think there are more october crashes but it's just very very strange i'm a layman okay so i don't know you're an expert what would you say to that well here's the thing now i i describe let me describe us what a cycle is to you from a big perspective i use daniel's timeline to calculate the cycle so basically from start to finish it's like driving from uh, if you're since I live in the U.S., it's like driving from Los Angeles to New York, and there's ten ten cars leave or ten people leave, and they all know that on a certain day they need to be in New York because that's the top, right? And so, but there's multiple ways of getting there. So the problem is, is the calculation gives you the endpoint, but not the route that you get that you use to get there. So then I have to use chart analysis and patterns, and the stock market is is the, probably the most difficult chart pattern because of the you know the price printing and, and the manipulation that goes on versus gold and silver so gold and silver much much easier to track their chart patterns but I, what I can tell you since you are bringing up October if there is going to be a crash in October and again I will I'll know that as we get closer right now we're a little too far away still um, it would be a secondary crash not the first so we should have that will be the second leg down if there's going to be a crash in October or late la or later in October, say into like the last part of this, uh, you know, latter part of this year. So hopefully so, that can. So really, you're expecting something to happen, June, July. You're expecting another major crash, as we saw in August 2015. You're expecting something imminently. Right. That's what the patterns are showing us right now. So we should see something like that happen here, versus. Um, you know, waiting till October. So we let you know. So that so it's. I mean, June is not over. We're only in into the tenth of June, and July hasn't started yet. So we need to see what happens here in the near term. But but, but so that's the best I can tell you on the equity market or stock market. But today's you know the fact that we scheduled this interview today, the fact that the equity markets are down over two percent, almost many of them. I mean, it's tell you it's very, very encouraging where we're what's happening today. It is, that's correct, but we need to take into consideration that the US 30 Wall Street was up to 18,000, so it's at, again at its top. Um, you know, if we expect uh, the US 30 to bash down to 6,000, um, which is a drop of up to 70% in, in its equity value, that is going to be absolutely humongous and the ripple effect will um, knock everybody around the world off their feet we are in for a ride are we not Bo? right well that's the thing see being in the equity market is extremely dangerous because from a cycle perspective I can tell you that I'm um, you know being in the precious metals owning physical gold and silver you have nothing to worry about financially because you've protected yourself you have basically bought insurance against paper so if paper crashes collapses your asset of you know gold and silver comes out and says here you know here it'll pay you 
huge returns because of what just happened. Basically, because your insurance policy of gold and silver is paying out. On the other end of it, if you're being in the equity markets, um, you have to, again, big picture perspective. Cycles and, and patterns, okay? Triple tops equal collapses on the third leg down, okay? So I think you've known that. But if you look at, you know, the, the past 20 years, you had a top in the year 2000. There's another, like, and the, the FTSE is a beautiful example of this. You know, go, go pull up a 20-year chart on the FTSE. There was a top on the FTSE in the year 2000, correct? There was a top on the, there's a top on the FTSE. Since we're in Europe, let's talk about European markets. Um, we're going to do a top in the FTSE in the year 2007 8. So they're right in the end of 7 to early 8. And then it collapsed. And then there was another top in the FTSE in the year 2015, last year. Okay. However, since 2015, the FTSE has not gone higher. Okay. So, it's, so you've got a triple top. Right. And then you get, and so the FTSE broke. Um, that is, is wedge pattern in August. And then all that's done is it's gone up and down and up and down. But it made now in the past year, guess what it's made again now? Three more tops on a weekly basis. So you've got a top in, uh, I, I believe it would have been July. You know, so I don't have in front of you. It could have either May, May or July, but I think it was July. You had a top on the FTSE in July. Then you had a top on the FTSE at the end of December. And now you have another top on the FTSE, and they're all lower highs, I believe. Or even if they're not, they're you know, even if they're all parallel, they're all triple tops. And then you get collapse or failure. So from a 20-year perspective, triple tops. From a one-year perspective, triple tops. And all that's happened now is you had the final rally to the upside. And if my cycle count is correct, we should be turning now. And if that's the case, then basically the next leg to the downside begins here and now. And um, again, so now we're going to get crash legs. Now, so the cycles don't give me prices. That's the issue. So we need to calculate other ways. But basically, this crash should be worse than it was in February and in August. And then once that crash happens, we might get a bounce. And then we might get the issue that you're talking about for October, um, as, as you mentioned, you know, for October being an ugly month. So we'll see. But first, we need to see what happens between now and October for the, for the price patterns uh, or objectives uh, for the equity markets. Fascinating stuff. Absolutely fascinating. Mr. Bo Polney from Gold2020Forecast.com. The video that Bo was talking is titled Much Watch June 2016 Zero Hour um, Bo Polney. You can find it on Bo's YouTube account or um, just go to the um, description underneath this, this interview and you'll see it there. Um, Bo, quickly last words for anyone who's listening to this and thinking I've got to make a move I've got to do something how do people protect themselves their families and their loved ones you know the most I can't I don't want to give financial advice but what I can tell you tell you is this if you feel in, in your heart if you feel that things don't feel right you know and you just and you know you just you look at life and you, you know, it doesn't feel right. If you, if someone took, and this is a beautiful example because I think anybody can relate to this. If, if your net worth is X, you take 10% of X and you buy gold or silver, right? Now, gold is going to go multiple of 10 times in the years to come. So over the next many years to come, gold will multiply by a factor of 10, which will put gold easily over $10,000, Okay, but if the and if the equity markets collapse, as an example, and and paper collapse collapses, your ten percent investment was nothing but an insurance policy you bought, and and should things happen the way cycles are telling us they will, then basically your insurance policy of gold and silver goes out to pay you back, and you preserved, because the price of gold would increase tenfold, and your 10% investment, you will preserve your wealth. So you'll, per you'll preserve your purchasing power uh, into the future. So the point is, is just it's important to be positioned. It's important, it's important to understand history. And see, the problem is, and Herschel is, in that video, you see, I basically go through cycles. And the, the problem is, this is the cycle that's occurring right now. It's a 252-year cycle. 
Okay, so basically, a generation from the Bible is 70 years. So 70 divided by 252 is roughly 3.5 generations. So three and a half generations have gone by. And the problem is, you know, every mother and father keeps telling their, it's everybody's grown up with paper, and they keep growing up with paper, and it's all it is. You know, the Currency Act started in, in 1764, I think, and, and since that Currency Act of 1764, we've got three and a half generations go by, and everybody believes that paper is money now. But as a result, what all, all that happens is that that cycle comes to an end, and all of a sudden, gold and silver become, you know, incredible, have incredible power and wealth to them in terms of value, um, and the paper collapses. And next thing, and, and it doesn't have to collapse, go to zero right away. But the point is, is it'll be hard to get precious metals if, if, if faith and confidence cracks in the system that's been going on for 252 years. So that's that's the all, that's the bottom line is understanding. You know, if you don't uh, if you don't own gold or silver, you do not understand history. You don't understand money. You don't understand how the whole system runs and how it works. Because the bottom line is, history tells us that ultimately. The world comes back to gold and silver because that is money. That is that is the that is the way to preserve your wealth. Uh, the problem is it's a massive, it's a grand cycle. So you so by not understanding history clearly, um, you know you, you you've been taught to not believe in gold, but that's it's not the truth. Um, so that's that's really the, the you know how we can you know what I wanted to say about that. And then if people if if you're interested in timing points, so we've got you know so gold has been going incredibly well. We have very very accurate and you know very exciting time points that you know weeks and and, and dates into the future. We include those within our gold index. Um, so we you know provide timing points if you know, someone's interested. Um, and but the point is is that. Um, you need to own gold if you know if you don't have any. You know you might consider doing you know holding some in your possession and just, and for the just in case. That's right. Every family should have insurance for the car, for the health, for everything, especially your parents. And gold and silver is insurance in my point of view financial insurance for what may or may not come you're not going to lose so Bo let's wrap this up thank you so much for your time fantastic to speak to you I, I wish the best for you and your family but how can people get in contact with you I want to get so if you're interested in learning more on my webpage gold 2020forecast.com we have multiple um, old um, a handful of old interviews that we've done we've actually listed them all there there you can actually find the actual interview that we did when we called the bottom in gold and made other forecasts we actually did another interview in January um, in, in, uh, in Vancouver saying that gold is going to break out at the end of January well we called that to within I think one trading day so this is all the videos that we've done most of them there on our web page and interviews at the very bottom of the web page, if they're interested in, in getting more specific details, getting my charts and my time points is, is key, then we provide that within our gold index. Um, but I think the inf inf information that I provide, um, I think is, it, I don't know who else pro you know, provides these, this type of information. So I, I'm, you know, I'm glad to do it and, and try to educate you know, the world and, and, and give people a fair, if you do warning. Um, and, you know, I wish everybody well and God bless.